And now, the star of the show, Jordan Rogozinski. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Jordan 411 Sports Show. Today, I'm very honored to have uh, this uh, second female guest, other than my teacher, Miss Vince. No offense to her, but this one is better. <laughs> um, um, uh, she's been in broadcasting since 2002. Please give a warm welcome to the TSN reporter right from Winnipeg, Sarah Lecky. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, I'm good. very excited to be here. Yeah. Um, now I want to start off. How did you get into broadcasting? Well, when I grew up, I used to love watching sports with my dad. And so I played a lot of sports, but I would always watch, whether it be hockey or football, with my dad at home. And I would see people, see the reporters, particularly the ones that were on site, whether they be the sideline reporters or the hosts. And I would always think, that seems like just the coolest job if you love sports, that you actually get to be there where all the action is happening. So from a very young age, I thought that that's what I wanted to do. And to be honest, I don't think that I had a backup plan either. So I'm really glad that it's worked out because I can't think of really anything else that I wanted to do with it. But that was it from a young age. And I went to school and out in BC and got a communications, majored in communications at Simon Fraser University Very and started. University. It is a great university. Didn't Rich on Simon I go there? Uh, there are a whole bunch. Abby Kahn went there, Doug Brown went there. If we want to talk about a bunch of uh, former bombers that are from there and um, went to, so got my degree from Simon Fraser and started working in television while I was at school. Cool. Um, what was the first thing you learned at school? What, wanted to become a broadcaster? Like, what's the first thing you learn in communication? Well, you know what? It actually, so the their program doesn't really set you up for broadcasting. Say it was, um, but while I was there, I started, I had had a discussion with a family friend, and I told him what I wanted to do, and he said, you should volunteer, get experience, meet people, get some of the connections, and. So I knew nobody when I moved to uh, Vancouver. And so I started volunteering for the SFU sports department. And I would write press releases. Or actually, the very first feature that I did for their sports uh, magazine was on AbbyCon, because he was playing <laughs> there at the time. Enough. Yeah, weirdly enough. So Abby and I joke about that. Um, and so that was, so I started working through there and just through that work, I met people and was able to um, get some connections. And someone said to me that they that was working there that he was also working at a local s television station at the time. Asked if I would apply to be the sports producer for the weekend sports, and that was how uh, I got into that. What's the way way to approach somebody about like volunteering and broadcasting? Or well, I think just showing an interest really with it uh, and being willing, for me it was being willing to do anything with it. I said, I will, I said, I will, I will write the press releases. I'll do if you need somebody to run paper and do this. It was my deal at the time with them was, I said, just if anybody comes up to interview any of the athletes, could you please introduce me to whoever comes up onto the hill and that was that was kind of the agreement and it proved to be an invaluable experience for me who was the one that you met who got you into the job at tsm where you work now okay so i had started where i worked in local sports in vancouver and there so even there i was doing um I would go out with a cameraman on shifts when I wasn't working to go to cover Canucks. So Ooh. to go post game, because we would just send a cameraman out, but no reporter. And I said, just let me go. I just want to go get the experience and see what it's like and take everything in. And so I went and did that. And through there, just met a bunch of people 
obviously in the media Vancouver. And so before I started at TSN, I was with The Score in Vancouver. And then it was through my work at The Score and who I met there that yeah. uh, people recommended me for mm -hmm. TSN and to do, as, um, especially when I first came on at TSN, was to work on the CFL broadcasts. Did you always want to work at TSN? Was that the goal? You know what? It wasn't, to be honest. I just wanted to work. I wanted to really enjoy what I did. And I loved, I loved being in Vancouver. I loved all of the colleagues that I had from all the different media stations. It was a, I just had a ton of fun, really. I enjoyed going to work every day. So I just wanted to be wherever I could do work that made me the happiest with it. So uh, I took a bit of a jump, even though TSN, it has turned out obviously to be fantastic. But I moved to Toronto once again. Didn't really know anybody when I moved to Toronto, but it worked out great. How is that? Because Toronto is a big city. It so sure is. Was that an adjustment from Vancouver it, to Toronto? It absolutely was. And in Vancouver is obviously such a big city too, but I'd gotten so comfortable yeah. there and then to move to Toronto. So I spent a lot of time on the road. I was the one that volunteered to go on the road all the time because I didn't know a lot of people. And even though I have lived in big cities, enjoy it, I still... I like smaller cities and I like being able to know, you know people around where I'm going all the time. I got lost constantly in Toronto. So what you probably don't remember is that before all of whether it be phones had Google Maps on it and the GPS and I didn't have a GPS in my car. So you use something called MapQuest. And so and then you would print it out from the computer. And so I, so I couldn't divert from where I was going. Right? And so I would be looking while I was driving, going, OK, so in about four kilometers, I need to turn right onto this street. And if traffic was bad, which it can be in Toronto, I would get cocky. And I would think, I'm OK. I'm going to take this exit. And I'll be able to figure out how to get there. And I never could. And so then I would end up calling my dad, in Winnipeg, I'd call my best friend in Vancouver, and I would have pulled over to the side of the road, and I would say, I am at, I don't know, 2946 Doug Road. Can you please put this into MapQuest? This is where I'm going. I have no idea how to get there. So I spent a lot of time on the side of the road, completely lost, having no idea, seeing in Toronto with all of the tall buildings and the skyline, and thinking, that skyline's getting farther and farther away. <laughs> this isn't a good thing. So uh, Toronto was a bit of an adjustment for me. <laughs> so here is a lot easier. Yeah, here is a lot easier for me. Um, what's your favorite part about being a TSN reporter? Oh, there's so many. So I love what I get to do with the Jets. That's part I of it. Love that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun having the fact that we get to broadcast the games and we have our pregame show that we do uh, here on site as well. So that's one of my favorite things. I obviously love my football family and all the different things that I get to do there. But I just I love the people that I get to work with. We have some pretty fantastic crews that are the same people have worked on the same events for a number of years. And so it feels like a mini family. So I love being around them. Who's your favorite jet to interview? Oh, you're going to try to get me into trouble, aren't you? Yeah. Hmm. You know what? There are a lot that are really good. But I, there are some. Josh Morrissey is always great. Um, Andrew Cobb from Lowry. But there's no complaints, any of them. They're all. Patrick Liney is really funny. They're all really good. Yeah. Um, do you, <laughs> you when Tyler Myers was with the Jets, when you would interview him, you had to look up at him. Right? <laughs> and I always said that um, you still look funny. So. <laughs> well, you know what? I, it was always so when I would, so I often wear, well, I'll try to wear some sort of high heel for it or something with it. But if I was wearing flats, guaranteed that's when Tyler, and I'm not that short. But guaranteed, if I was wearing flat boots, that was the day that Tyler was going to do something that, an interview. And I would. I'd look up like this. 
Um, what's the coolest story that you have working for the Jets? Oh, covering them? No, we've done a lot of fun stuff with them, but we have, you know what? I don't know if I could even, I'd have to. Would Finland be? Finland was very, yeah, Finland for sure would be a lot of fun. The it playoffs. Was, it was very busy. The playoff rounds were, see, you don't even need me. You can tell me all of my favorite wins. This is, it, the playoffs were great. The breakup. <laughs> The playoffs were the playoffs were a lot of fun. It was tiring. We spent a lot of time being in airports, everything like that. But to be able to see, you think about the cities when they went to the West Final. Yeah. That do Minnesota. So uh, St. Paul is a great hockey market. They're passionate fans. Nashville was an experience, and like anything else, oh, wow. and they've is so. That was crazy, and then to go see the spectacle of Vegas, it was quite, it was quite the run. I love the chat that they do when NASA scores. They said, how luck, it's <laughs> all your fault, and be real and all frame, and I For thought it. that was cool. For it, they yeah. have, it is a loud arena, and yeah. those, yeah, they get yeah. on it. They've got bands going a time, it was, yeah, yeah it was quite the yeah. experience. Um, what's the biggest airport you've been in? Oh, probably over in, some of the ones in Europe. When I was still, I did the, I covered the 2007 World Juniors that were over in Leksand and Mora, Sweden, um, where Kanda won gold, that one. Um, and uh, so probably some of the airports going through there would be, otherwise there's always yeah. like Chicago, yeah. uh, O'Hare, but probably yeah. over in Europe. Those ones were a little bit more challenging. What is the best city to be in in the NHL? Ooh. Since we're talking about airport. Since okay, so you want just city overall? The city overall. My favorite city would probably be New York. New so, York. Yeah. yeah, I love I love going through it for a city as a whole. I love New York. You don't mind the busyness? No, which is funny because I usually so I covered. The, I spent a lot of time in New York, especially during the last lockout. I was always there, including over New Year's Eve. And we were a block from Times Square where the ball drops. So you can imagine how crazy and chaotic it was. And Jordan, guess who slept through the ball dropping? You? Yeah. I, I, think I, I never went to, make New Year's. I, okay, thank you. That makes me feel better. Except I don't, this year. Oh, did you? Oh, I didn't. Oh, no, I watch the ball drop on the Eastern feed and then I <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> but yeah. I went to, I think I was feeling a little under the weather in there, but I was, um, I think I was asleep at 10 o'clock, a block away, woke up the next morning, hadn't heard a peep, a block from where the ball dropped. I, everyone that I was there with was showing me pictures afterwards about trying to get out there because they shut down all the streets and to get in, you had to show your hotel card and all sorts of stuff. Totally oblivious to it. One block from Times um, Square. Do you, uh, what's the coolest thing you have covered overall? Oh, I've covered, a, I've been so yeah. fortunate to cover a lot of great things. I was in, I covered the figure skating for the Vancouver Olympics in 2010. Skating. So that was pretty great because that was the, f there were so many great stories there and that was the first time that Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer won gold and started their thing. I've covered March Madness. So March Madness. Yeah, so if that you're a Hoops fan, it is intense. something else for it. And a lot of football, easily over the years. So there's, there's been so many great ones of all different kinds of sports, which is Where, what's really neat. Uh, which college did you cover at for March Madness? Um, Michigan was playing so we were it was in cleveland that uh, which was interesting because i'd never been to cleveland before um but michigan was one of the teams that was there and that was crazy because everybody of course yeah. was 
in full Michigan gear all the time. And there was even, there was a little girl that was sitting, and I'll always remember her, was sitting behind me. And she was in, um, she was in head to toe, Michigan, a little cheerleading outfit, but knew the chants, knew everything. And I kept looking back thinking, this girl could not be older than four years old. Yeah. And, but obviously her parents had <laughs> taught her very well for being a Michigan Cold fan. <laughs> Cobb football. And it's all about Cobb. Yeah, and I've I covered basketball when it was being held at Cowboy Stadium as well, which is crazy because the scoreboard is massive that they have there. In fact, what, so they had to raise the floor underneath it, and I said if that scoreboard were to come down, it would cover the entire basketball court and beyond with it. But it was something. It was something else to see. If you weren't close, you couldn't see anything because that building is huge. I would love to be there one day, that the bucket list. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah it's something yeah. else. And those cowboy fans, too, are oh. intense. <laughs> they sure are. Uh, <laughs> your um, favorite NFL team is the Packers. Yes. Ever been to a Packers game? I have been. Oh, yeah, I one of the lucky ones. Yes, I took my dad back in 2007 to Lambeau to go on a father-daughter trip. And we went and we saw the Packers host and actually shut out the Minnesota Vikings. Um, yeah. It, oh, no. We have Vikings fans here? Oh, that's a shame. Jordan, you got to watch out for your crowd. This yeah. isn't good. They never booed before. <laughs> no. But <laughs> now, now they're booing. Oh, for it. That's what you, that's what you get from it, right? Yeah. Oh, those Vikings fans. Yeah. Um, you know, so it was, it was a ton of fun, and it was really... I, and I've been to Green Bay before to go cover the Packers for work, and it's one of the things that I love, and this is one of the reasons why when I was young and first started covering, uh, or st started following NFL, that I loved Green Bay, was that the whole city shuts down because everybody is watching yeah. the Packers game. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, sorry, my condolences. <laughs> when they lost the... the I know, it wasn't it. pretty. It oh. was ugly. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um... um uh, do you like cheese? Because in Green <laughs> Bay... <laughs> Maybe that's why I like cheese so much. Because you've been to Green Bay, see? Yes, because I do. I love cheese. Do you like cheese? I'm addicted. <laughs> I, I love cheese and apple. Oh. So that's my snack of choice most of the time. Oh, see, I... And cookies. Oh. Are you a cookie person? Certain kinds. Peanut butter cookie. Peanut butter, yeah. I'll go for those. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, what do you like to eat on the road? Oh, it depends on where I am. Sometimes it, sometimes it isn't easy to find <laughs> food depending yeah. on how, what time you're finishing, yeah. stuff like that. Usually, honest, I really like places that you can go where they make your own, where you can say make your own salads or do stuff like oh, that. Oh, so you're not a junk food? Well, sometimes. I'm not going to tell everybody I'm a junk food fan, Jordan. Don't out me like that. There's no McDonald's, one, two, twice. When I was, I will tell you that when I was in, so when we were in Sweden for that World Juniors, we were in this small town and there were very few food options. And I've never been so excited to see the Golden Arches as I was there because you had very few choices and I couldn't understand what a lot of the food was unless there were pictures to go along with it because I just couldn't read it. Um, so I ate a lot of pizza because I could. there was sometimes a pizza place across the street from the hotel that was open and I could figure out enough to be able to say, I will take that pizza, or maybe I would go to McDonald's. I don't like pizza, so I would go to McDonald's. You don't like pizza? I don't like pizza. Oh, Jordan, you don't know what you're missing. I know. Pizza. I just said to someone the other day, if I was stuck on a deserted island, I might ask for pizza to be my one food. See, I would ask for burgers. 
Oh. That would be mine. Okay. Well, Ooh. those are really delicious yeah. too. I get that. I, I just, I don't know. Maybe it's the sauce. But it's the cheese. How do you not like the cheese? Yeah, I like plain cheese. Oh. Yeah. For Poutine, it. I like <laughs> anything else with cheese. Cheese for it. Except that. For it. Well, you might be the perfect person to go for lunch with then, because I wouldn't have to share my pizza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. I went to lunch with Joy. Yeah. Joy Did you? Owen, I love Joe. And um, he brought me to the Pafoy's. Yeah. And I ate like mad there. <laughs> it was so good. Shout out Joe. <laughs> That's absolutely shout out Joe. Yeah. He's one of my absolute favorite people. What? Um, like you have a daughter. I do. Uh, who is into swimming. Yep. Um, and does she have, I know she's young, but. Does she have um, plans to take it professionally? Or? Well, you know what? She swims a lot right now, but she swims and dances and oh, loves. And yeah, lot. so she does. She's a lot. She does a lot. Volleyball and basketball. So we'll see. But right now, I spend a lot of time at the pool. Mm -hmm. do, uh, do you like the pool or sometimes not? Sometimes. Well, sometimes it can be really hot. Mm -hmm. and humid mm -hmm. in there. I don't like to swim myself, so, but I like, I love watching her, whatever she Never does. Never learned to watch. No, I learned. I, I tried to get out of swimming like lessons it. as much as possible, <laughs> though, as a kid. I always found a reason to what not go. What did you do? For it. Well, I used to make up excuses all the time when to try to not, I just what, didn't what like swimming. Those excuses? I don't, again, why are you trying to get me in trouble? What if my parents this, watch this? this is what I do. <laughs> this is not good. Jordan, don't get me in trouble. I guarantee you that my mom and dad will still watch this. And you don't want to get me in trouble with them now. Sorry, mom and dad. That's right. Mom and dad, I never made up excuses to go. I always love to do swimming lessons. They probably know you do. For it. Maybe. Maybe. Um, do you, um, summer coming up yep. soon. Are you excited for the Bombers? I am excited for the CFL season. Very yeah. excited. I love football. So, yeah. I mean, I love hockey too, but one of the things that I'm always excited about with football is that with hockey, obviously, I'm inside yeah. all the time. I joke that that's why I'm so pale, because I never get any sunlight or vitamin D during any of the months from October till at least April. But in the summer, I love being side with the football and I'm always get so excited. I sometimes I'll go back and watch some of our sports center top tens or watch old games oh, yeah. or oh, yeah. then when you I'll watch the that. openings, stuff like that for it to get myself really excited yeah. for it. Um what's um your best person to interview Winnipeg Blue Bomber was? Ooh um well I was mean was there current or? current so I think, you know what, they have a lot of really good ones. Uh, current ones probably, I mean, we obviously we interview Andrew Harris a lot yeah. during the broadcast. Stanley Bryant's a lot of fun to interview yeah. as well. How about Jamarcus? Is he, because he seems fun. It, for it, he does, but can I tell you that he used to scare me for well, it? Because well, he's very intense. He would scare me too. Yeah. Lining up. <laughs> Could no, you, way. no way, no thank I you. I would duck myself. <laughs> For it, very, you know what, he's, uh, and he's very friendly and he's got the cutest yeah. kids and family and everything like that, but I always joke that he's, he's an intimidating one. Have you ever done Madlock before? I, uh, well, not during a game. I mean, I've talked to him yeah. off um, practice days and stuff like that. Because I find kickers are um, floating my Troy Westwood <laughs> or a different breed. <laughs> like, they're kind of odd. Yeah. So is he, like, different? Like, well, I yeah. mean, he's a kicker, right? Yeah, he's they, a yeah. kicker. Kickball for a living. <laughs> he is meticulous in his preparation. Yeah. I've never seen um, I've never seen a kicker take it to the degree that he has, but that's why he's one of the very best at it, right? Um, and Michael Shea brought him back. He yeah. He's going to be done. For it. 
So, yeah. yeah. I think Chad Rampo had a lot to do with it. You think so? Yeah. For it? They're quite the team, those ones. Yeah. And um, Willie Jefferson. Yes. I have to. I have to, because he recently signed a two-year extension. So Which I know you're very happy yeah, about. I am. Absolutely. Uh, I was nervous that he was going to go to the Dolphins. Yeah. But uh, I, I knew the chances of him going were slim, uh, but I would have been happy either way. Yeah. But I'm super happy he's back. Yeah. Oh, I think it's going to be huge for that line to be able to have him back. Absolutely. And Michael Holloway. Yeah. That's another big one. For it. Who we recently signed. Yeah. More depth at linebacker. Yeah. Yeah. For it. Yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting to see. There's a lot to be excited about. Not just, I mean, I know that you're a and huge Tor Bombers fan. And Toronto. But there's a lot to be excited about with this CFL season. And Otto. Yeah. I'm curious what for it. I'm very do. curious to see what the East will do yeah. this year. So hopefully that there's a little bit more parity and that it's not just really strong in the West and teams struggling in the East because it's well, always better when you've got nine good teams competing. Well, Henry Burr said it should be, so we'll see. That's right. If not, you'll remind him. Yeah, I'll remind him. Exactly. Yeah, like, uh, Henry, Burr. you said, you told us back in February. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm done. So thanks for coming on. Um, been a pleasure. Absolutely uh, my pleasure. Um, I just want to thank my Mac for allowing me to do this. Uh, for uh, since my great tenure, um, it's been a fun ride. Thank you, Mr. Neal, for uh, putting up with all my tech <laughs> in the middle of the night or during <laughs> hockey games. Thank you to all my camera people, and it's been a fun ride. And you still see me though, so cheers. Oh, on Mike FM uh, radio. Uh, you can find it, uh, Michael Garrell on Twitter or um, or on their Facebook. Mike FM Radio, you can find it. Please like and subscribe to Jordan's YouTube channel and follow him on Twitter.